playing through Soma a second time gave me even more of an appreciation for how meticulously detailed its world is. Most of this detail is lying in the open and ties into its story and setting, but there's a wealth of other interesting stuff you might not find during your first time playing. So I'd like to share 10 interesting things I found while playing Soma and by reading what others had discovered online. All of these are spoiler free with the exception of the last one, so if you're worried about that sort of thing, don't worry, I'll give you plenty of warning before it appears. Let's start from the beginning. The Toronto subway that Simon rides to Mr. Munchie's office is pretty accurate to the one in real life, down to the appearance of the tram cars. The four stations that appear on the LED screen are also real Toronto subway stations. In order, they are Osgood, St. Patrick, and Queen's Park. The rambling bum sitting next to you also has some interesting things to say. If you listen carefully, you can hear him say this. And after your phone call with Jesse, he'll mutter, find me in a vote booth. All a big setup. This is likely a reference to the time leading up to Canada's recent federal election, when there was a lot of controversy surrounding the Conservative Party for numerous reasons I won't get into. As a Canadian, I thought it was a pretty nice touch. Once you reach the office, you'll find a keypad on the door leading to Munchie's room. Normally, you're supposed to find a note in the receptionist desk telling you the combination, but if you enter the code without looking at it, you'll get some unique dialogue out of Simon. Ah, I guessed it. That's amazing. Before we leave, there are a couple more easter eggs here that are pretty difficult to see from the office. If you use debug mode to look outside, you'll find a billboard advertising a beer brand with an awfully familiar name. For those who don't know, it's the name of the castle from Amnesia the Dark Descent and you can also see it in these weird, low-res posters hanging outside. Oh, and you can see the CN Tower from here, so that's kind of cool. Arriving at Pathos 2, there's an optional monster encounter here. If you've played the game, there's a good chance you already know about this, but here goes. Most sane players probably won't open this door until the noise subsides, but if you open it before the proxy on the other side stops banging on it, it'll come rushing out to attack you. I didn't do this on my first playthrough, so I was really surprised when it happened to me on my second run. Let's skip ahead to the comm center at Upsilon. There are actually three stations you can contact here. Connecting to Lambda will advance the plot, but you can also talk to Theta and Omicron. Choosing Theta gets you this hidden audio. While Omicron has a far more ominous message. Next up we have the transport shuttle. After departing, your final destination will always be Lambda, but choosing any other station will change the video that plays on the monitor. Here's the announcement that plays for Lambda. We are now leaving Upsilon for Lambda. Lambda is Pathos 2 shipping dock and transportation hub. And here's what it looks like when you choose Delta, for example. We are now leaving Upsilon for Delta. Delta manufactures and assembles carrier shells for satellites and probes, specifically to be used in the Omega space gun. Together with Theta, they are able to tailor any satellite or payload to our customers' needs. After the shuttle crashes, you're supposed to take the Omni tool and open the maintenance hatch leading outside, but if you accidentally leave it behind... Oh, fuck, I forgot the Omni tool back in the shuttle. ...and have to go back for it, this will happen. Nice one, Frictional. When you finally get to Lambda, you'll find one of the Curry escape vessels crashed outside the station. If you try to interact with it before heading inside, you'll prompt an additional dialogue line from Simon when speaking to Catherine. Okay, so we go to Theta. <sighs> I don't know, it's pretty far. Catherine, look around. What else is there to do? You know what? I found a sunken vessel just outside. Bet that could take us to Theta. Really? Didn't look completely out of action. It even lit up a little when I tried the Omni tool on it. Okay then, let's have a look. I'll just eject from this thing. Don't forget to take me with you. It's only a minor difference, but it's a nice touch. Okay, this last interesting thing is a major story spoiler, so for those who want to play the game without ruining it for yourself, I'll sign off here. 
Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video intriguing, and give yourselves a pat on the back if you already found any of this out for yourself. Also, feel free to share anything I missed in the comments below. I would love to hear some of the interesting things you found while playing through the game. It was pretty neat putting this together, so I might consider making more videos like it for other games. Anyway, if you don't want spoilers, now's your last chance to turn back. Without further ado, here it is. After reaching Site Tau near the end of the game, you'll meet Sarah, the last surviving human on Earth. Before taking the Ark, you have the choice to either leave her be, or disconnect her life support at her request. Fulfilling her wish prompts some melancholy final words. You ever been to Greenland? It's very beautiful. Well, at least when you get out of the city. Besides being a somber moment, it's also a subtle nod to the Penumbra games, all of which are set in Northern Greenland. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and take care.